Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to bless your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody tuning in today. All of our Spirit of Fire Nation, we love you. We thank God for you wherever you are locally, globally. We thank God and appreciate you uh, so much. And we thank God for you showing up today. What I would like for you to do is go ahead right now, go ahead and get your coffee, get your juice. Hopefully you got everything ready. Uh, we're going through the worship experience um, and with our singing and giving honor to God. But we also know a part of our worship is getting into the word, man, and just seeing what God has to share with us. So we want as many people to hear about this today. So go ahead and share right now. I'm asking you invite somebody into our virtual space today. Invite them to come in and hear this word. This is going to bless them today. I'm telling you. I am telling you. I've been hearing some stuff even just hot off the press this morning um, that I need for you to just get them locked in and tuned in. Anybody that's believing for recovery, to recover something they've lost, or to know how to begin to build from where they currently are, they need to tune in right now. Go ahead and send it out there. If you're on our Facebook, I mean, our YouTube channel, maybe some of you are coming in on the Facebook platform and it, you want to go over to our YouTube channel and click subscribe and hit the notifications button so that you can be notified of information and uh, content that we're uploading um, on a regular basis. We want you to do that. We want you to click the likes. This is important. Uh, we want you to like the message today. We want you to share it with other people because that's important. You know how the algorithms and all that stuff goes. So we want to make sure that we get this word out to as many people. We want it coming across their feed. We want it. We want this word to go global and we want people to be impacted by the word of God. God has given us a mandate to go teach his people who they are. And so we are doing that as we are excited about what God is doing. We're expecting great things. We're expecting the supernatural to manifest. No matter where you are, no matter what's going on, there's a recovery plan for you. And I'm telling you now, God is saying this, man, I feel stirred up. The anointing has hit me this morning in my private time where I was going before God, even crying and just like, Lord, goodness, this thing is good. And it's like, I need you to release this. He was working on me first. And it's like, I need you to release this to others. And I need you to begin to share how and to help them in this recovery process. And it's almost like I feel like I'm, I'm going to do some pastoring today, too. You know, it just sometimes as a pastor, you got to oversee the flock of God. And so for those that are coming in for the very first time, we want to welcome you as well. All of our first timers. We just want to thank God for you and just appreciate you showing up today. And we want you to sit back and enjoy the word of God and to get your pens and pads, get your paper, your devices, whatever. And I want you to go ahead and lock into this. Part of the role of being a pastor is to oversee the flock of God. And so God says, I'm going to give pastors after my own heart and they'll watch over your souls. It is my responsibility. It is my right wife's responsibility. It's our responsibility to be overseers of your soul, to watch over you, to minister the word of life to you. And so we don't take that lightly. And so one of the things in doing that is, as we minister, it's going to come out in the spirit of love. And I believe you're going to be stirred up. There's going to be conviction that hits. There's going to be a stirring up that takes place as well. But I believe God is going to share something with you that's going to bless your life today. So listen, at this time, let's go ahead. We're going to go before God in prayer and we're going to get started with today's message. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you, Father, that every ear is anointed to hear. <clears throat> every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you for it. We covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. We thank you, Father, right now that signs, wonders, and miracles will follow the preach word of God. Father, we desire to be all that you call for us to be. 
globally, locally, individually, collectively, even as a body of Spiritified Fellowship, as a part of the body of Christ, everything that you desire for us to experience, everything that you desire for us to have, all of your promises that are yes and amen, Father, we receive it by faith now, and we expect to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. We expect to see your supernatural, transforming, miraculous power to take place. Now, Holy Spirit, clothe me with great wisdom today. Insight, let the spirit of love, the spirit of faith rise strong, the spirit of prophecy as needed to rise strong, to help to declare and to decree. For Father, you created us, Father, as speaking spirits in this earth, that we declare and decree things. And when we declare and decree things, they are established in this planet. And Father, everything has to align align itself. All of creation has to align itself to come to bring the past what we declare and decree out of our mouths. So we speak life right now to every dead situation that needs to come alive. We speak the dry bones that they may live. Father, for people who have been downtrodden, people who have been under attack, Father, we thank you for answers that you're giving us today for them. And we thank you, Father, for a recovery of all and we give you praise and glory for those that need to be healed internally, that those that need to be healed emotionally, we thank you for emotional healing, mental healing, physical healings that'll take place. And Father, we place a demand on the anointing to show up strong today. We give you glory, we give, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor now for it. In Jesus' name, Glory to God. Amen. 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 And amen. Who glory. Um, ah, let me, let me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna start slow here a little bit, but I want to, um, I need to share something as I was just sitting and just thinking we've been dealing now in this series, dealing with the recovery. And, um, I told you last week we started talking about, we kind of went, um, and finished up and tied up how to hear from God that you need to hear from God in order to recover all. And we started dealing with David when he came back from battle in Ziglag and all of a sudden now he saw that all of his family was gone, his stuff was stolen, the, the men that were in battle with him, all of their, their wives, their children, and their stuff was gone as well. And so the people turned on David. And so God, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And he went before God and he asked God this question, he said, Lord, shall I pursue? And so David, when he went and asked God, God answered. He told him to pursue. And he told him this. He says, you shall recover all. And so not only did David recover what he lost, but he also gained what the enemy had as well. And so we're expecting in this recovery for whatever it is you need to recover from, that whatever it is you need recovered in your life and restored in your life. The Bible says in Proverbs, if a thief be found, that he has to recover seven times greater than what he took from you. And so I'm holding God to that word. I'm holding, I don't care what has been lost in my life. I'm expecting a sevenfold recompense of whatever it is. And so now we want you to begin to say, okay, what, what is it that I need to begin to do? What is it that I need to begin to, to, to walk in in order for this recovery to take place? And so um, I made this statement last week and I, and I wanna say this first that you can win in life no matter what hand you've been dealt. No matter what hand you've been dealt, you can win with the hand that you currently have. Because I'm telling you this, all that you have is all that he needs. And God's blessing can come on what you currently have to get you to where you need to be. Um, but, and I begin to think about this. Um, I came across something this morning, I was just looking at something and uh, it caused me to think, and I'll just be honest, I was looking at a, it was a video um, uh, dealing with an old clip, actually, of a football player who had gotten into a situation with his girlfriend and uh, um, he had lied about it. And then they found the footage and then all of a sudden he was um, removed from the team and let go from his team that he was on. And it triggered something in me as I was hearing the commentary. And it's, it's something how God has started sharing stuff and using anything to speak to you about stuff. And I begin to think about people um, who've been caught in scandal in the public eye for different things. 
And it was interesting to me to see how some people have recovered and gone on to flourish and others who did the exact same thing have not recovered and seem that they lost everything. And so the question that I had in my head is, why is that? As I begin to go back in my own mind and, and just think about things and even about leaders in the faith and faith circles and, and religious circles and, uh, and some recovered from major scandal, but many did not. And, and most times I begin to see that most people didn't recover to the place that they had before it took place. And, and, and it just, it really be, began to, to really make me think, but many did not because they lost the trust of the people. And remember we talked about rebuilding trust because when we talk about recovery and supernatural recovery, I know we use that particular instance where David was concerned, that was more the recovery of stuff. But what about the recovery of your reputation? What about the recovery of your name? Those are things I begin to see. And in this cancel culture, so many people are so quick to dismiss you. If you do or say anything wrong, as if they don't have anything in their closet. The very ones that persecute you are the ones that are just as jacked up, even more so. And so sometimes I begin to think about this. And the number one area that rang in my mind that I, I got to deal with because I had my notes, but this is something that rang in me. It was like, Mike, before you deal with any of this stuff, any of these principles, you got to deal with this first. And it, and it was this. What rang in my heart and my mind was the aspect of pride. It was like, as I look back over some situations personally and others publicly, what makes the difference is the level of humility and humbleness that a person has to have or that's needed for the recovery process. Sometimes some people did not recover because they, I remember, and I'm going to share this, it's because number one, they never admitted to doing anything wrong. And if you don't admit to the problem, you can never recover from it or heal from it. I remember I tweeted this man of God, well-known man of God, and I just asked him this question. It was like, if you got caught in something or you did something wrong, I forgot exactly the, the way I worded the question. I think it was just dealing with like a leader or something or just anybody that you're working with or dealing with that has maybe messed up in their lives. And he just gave me three simple steps. He said, admit it quit it and set up an accountability system. It was three major points. And I want you to go ahead. You can take that and write it down in order. And this is part of your recovery. And I was like, man, this is good. Just simple steps. Number one, you got to admit what you did was wrong. If you never admitted it, because I began to see, I began to see people that I was close to. I began to see people that I, you know, that was just well known. I began to see things personally. And I remember times where God even told me personally, um, even younger in ministry, that he wanted me to, to overcome certain things in my life. And one of the first things he told me to do was go talk to certain people. And he wanted me to admit that, you know, what I was doing or, or to admit what was going on in me because I needed to confess it to get it out and bring it out in the forefront so that it could be dealt with. And I remember it was like the fear of the thing of admitting it was worse than actually doing it. It was like, because all of this stuff comes in your mind, what are people going to think about me if I really admit to it? I'm trying to, 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 to uh, uh, cover my reputation. I'm trying to keep my name good. Or, but see, 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 this is the thing. And when God started dealing with me about this humbleness, man, this thing was hitting so strong and heavy that you can't let your ego get involved in your recovery process because the process God may have for you might be different than what he has for somebody else. And I begin to go here in James 4 and 10. It says this, humble yourself. James chapter 4, verse 10. He says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. I begin to think back on pastors that I've seen that maybe had divorces and because of the, the divorce that it hit scandal, hit their church and it split their churches and members would leave and things would happen. And the potency of their ministry wasn't the same. The influence of that ministry wasn't the same. But then I begin to see some others 
who went through those things and through whatever strategy, whatever plan that God began to bring them back and kept them flourish and they begin to flourish again in ministry and they begin to grow again. And it was like, how come some people have gone through this God and it seemed like it just wiped them out? But then others that they stuck in there. And one of the key things that I saw, I remember seeing this one particular man, a guy, I won't say his name, but I remember he went on and he was doing even television interviews. And he admit, man, what I did was wrong. I screwed up. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. And so he admitted to what he did. He took ownership. It's something about taking ownership of what you do and what caused you to even get into that position in the first place. Because sometimes what can happen is sometimes I'm not talking about if there's just an attack against your life and Satan just took it. And we, we say stuff like that, that the devil did it and he took it. But sometimes it wasn't the devil per se. Yes, he tempted you, but it was through sometimes maybe your own decision making process <clears throat> that got you in that position. And now you need to recover from where you currently are. <clears throat> and I'm here to encourage you today that you can, you can recover from where you currently are. And one of the first things you're going to have to do to recover is to eliminate this attitude, this spirit of pride. You got to make sure that you're willing to say, God, whatever I have to do. And so I'm going to humble myself under your mighty hand. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to humble myself to you, God, in the sight of the Lord. And then it says this, that he shall lift you up. I want to read something out of 1 Peter 5, verses 1 through 7. And I'm going to get to the, the principles of faith and, and all of that stuff. But it was like he told me, I got to deal with this. You need to make sure that you got to humble yourself, man. It wasn't easy going and talking to some of the people that God told me to go talk to. And I remember, it's like, man, I'll, what are they going to think about me? What are they, what they going to say if I tell them I'm struggling with this or I'm dealing with this? And so I was so worried about my reputation that I was holding stuff in, but then it got to a point where the spirit of God began to convict and begin to prompt me. And then all of a sudden now I had a moment, a breakthrough moment. And he said, I need you to go now and talk to this person. I need you to get this thing addressed now. And every time I dealt with certain issues that I began to see God begin to elevate me in the spirit, there was something that opened up the power of God began to increase. Things begin to change. And I'm telling you, man, when you begin to overcome certain areas, there's going to be an outbreak and an explosion of God's goodness, grace, and power that are manifest in your life. And sometimes it was one of the hardest things. But once I went through it and once I did that thing, I'm telling you, there was a breakthrough that took place. But first, you got to admit that it's wrong. Sometimes the people is like, and I've seen this. People are living a lifestyle that you think is okay. And all of a sudden, everybody around you sees and knows that it's not okay. But because in your mind, the conviction has not taken place to what you're even doing is wrong. You'll never make adjustments. You'll never change. So if you don't change how you think about what you're doing or what you've gone through, there are people, there are people, listen, and as a pastor, as a leader, it is my job to oversee your soul. And even as I begin to think about this, the Holy Ghost begin to download stuff in me and talk to me about even stuff with this ministry is concerned, that there were things that I saw that happened and people that we lost and things that didn't work out because I did not even confront certain issues with certain people about certain things. And so now God is saying, you cannot, in order for you to have a new season that you're believing for, you cannot take an old mindset into a new season. You have to change how you're doing some stuff. You have to change. So now I'm very confrontational now. I'm very, it's like people that's like, okay, if you need to talk about it. And sometimes what I would do is I would preach across the pulpit talking about really I'm speaking to one person and everybody in the congregation is subject to me talking to this one person and they ain't getting nothing from it. And this all, and all of it is because I just didn't confront in private so that we could shout in public. And he says, that's it. That time is over. And you're going to have to look. Now, see, this is where, oh, this is going to be good. He says, you're going to have to. Now, he was speaking to me. And some things I won't say publicly. Some things, though, 
You need to begin to address within you. This is why scripture says, judge yourself, least you be judged. You got to take inventory and say, God, is there anything in my life that is hindering my progress? Is sometimes it's not, you know, we look for the principles that we need, the steps we need to do to make something happen. But I remember hearing from Rick Warren years ago is in the Purpose Driven Church book. And sometimes the question is, isn't what do we need to do to grow? The question may be what is hindering us from growing. And so sometimes in your life personally, you may need to ask God, what is hindering me from achieving this good life that you've already prearranged and made ready for me to live? Sometimes you know that stuff. Sometimes it's stuff that's even it hit is blinded from your eyes. You don't even realize that you are trying to recover, but you shooting yourself in your own foot because you have not overcome certain things that God has been dealing with you about. And because of this, he says, if watch this, if you continue in this path, you will lose your credibility. And if you continue in that area, people will keep seeing you a certain way and you trying to figure out why don't they want to do business with you? Why don't they want to do this? with? And sometimes it ain't the devil. Sometimes it's a thing. It's the area that you fail to deal with that has caused this thing to happen. He says it's time to dig deep. As he was talking, man, it was like, I'm, I'm going to dig deep into the recesses before I get to the principles, I need you to deal with the stuff that'll stop the principles from working. Because it says, watch this, is in the book of uh, Corinth, 1 Corinthians, I believe, it talks about that if you begin to walk in certain things, that it'll make the kingdom of God, like you won't inherit the kingdom of God if you practice certain things. So there'll be certain things, yes, it won't unravel your righteousness, but it will unravel and mess up your life and you're trying to figure out, I'm doing the giving, I'm doing this and I'm doing that, but it's just not working. And sometimes you have to, you've been omitting the weightier matters because you fail to identify in your own life what are areas that are hindering me from being this. And God was telling me, he says, now this time around, he says, I don't want you to harp and be be mad and trying to force people to do it. He says, you're going to have to speak the truth, but watch this. Remember, I want you to speak it in love. I want you to speak it with an element of grace, humility, um, mercy, and things of that nature, because watch this, because what you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose it anyway. So I'd rather lose you being true to what the truth is then to hold you and try to keep you by giving you words that please your ear. And that's no good for you because I want you healthy. I want this ministry healthy. I, watch this. The ministry is only as healthy as the people in it. And I want you well. I want to add value to your life. I want you to get your stuff. I want you to recover all. And some of you have been through hell and back. And sometimes, watch this. You, man, this who you're going to have to deny yourself things that your flesh want to do so that now you can recover is what you're doing worth the blessing that God has shown you just because you're following a passion in your flesh. He says, I have so much greater for you. I have so much better for you than what you're currently pursuing. Who am I talking to now? Lord Jesus. He says, you need to, he says, if you can give up and deny yourself this thing, I'll give you everything you've ever desired if you do it according to my will and way. He says, you listen, that's why in James 4 and 7, before I'm going to go to 1 Peter 5, but James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You have submission is that first word you got to deal with. That's humbleness. That's humility. To submit means to come under the authority. So when you come under God's authority and resist the devil, he'll flee. Because it's not in your name, it's in the name that's above every name the name of Jesus. And so you have to humble yourself and walk in that authority and walk in that power. And I'm telling you, oh Lord, gee, okay. it's so much running through me, y'all. I'm trying to settle myself down because so much is running through me. 
because people are going to be set free and delivered. People are going to be set free and delivered today. There's going to be, look, man, I wish I was in person with y'all. Oh, Lord. You're going to be set free and delivered. There are things, small foxes that have been spoiling your vine that are going to be eliminated. And God is saying, I'm going to show you those areas. And Holy Spirit has already been showing many people areas. You need to live up to what I've called you, Lord Jesus. Here, here we go. He says, watch this. I'm going to begin to speak over you, your identity, the true you, and you're going to begin to line up to who I'm calling you to be. Okay. Okay. If you are a deacon and I call you deacon, that means you're a servant. But then the word gives qualifications for deacons as to how your life should be. And he says this, if I call you that, your life should line up with that. If you call, if you desire the office of a bishop, he says, okay, if you want that office, here are the qualifications. There was only one dealing with ability and the rest, 14 others that dealt with character. So that means your character has to line up to what you're called to be. And God is going to take you through the transformation chamber of the renewing of your mind. And some of you have been running, but I'm coming for you today. The Holy Ghost says, because I love you, I'm coming for you. And he says, Mike, use what I put on you, the ability to speak into people's lives and to see the things that are binding them up for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free in Jesus' name. And you don't have to run from God. It's time for you to run to him. God is calling you back to your first love. God is calling you back to a place of holiness, humility, humbleness, and say, God, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Everything in my own effort, it ain't working out. And I need your glory. I need your grace. And I need your hand on me now. And God is saying, son, daughter, I have heard your cry. And I am coming to you now. And because my hand is upon you, I will do great things through you if you will humble yourself and come back to me. Other people have canceled you out, but God says, I never canceled you out. I love you. And may you experience the tangible love of God now. The agape like you've never experienced before. The love, the intimacy with the Father. Great and yeah, Robashikan. I call us back to intimacy with God. To great intimacy. Listen, I remember, I got to testify. I remember this is how God brought me out of stuff. It wasn't all of these things. I didn't know all of the necessary, the principles and all of this, that, and I didn't know all of the Greek and the Hebrew, but I knew how to get in the presence of God. I knew how to get before God and put on worship music. And as I would hear the word and see things, the presence of God would come into the room and God would convict me of stuff and say, Mike, you need to change this. I want you to fast this many days. I want you to eliminate this out of your life and eliminate that out of your life because he was bringing discipline. He was cleansing me of all of the junk, the general generational curses, the generational junk that my daddy dealt with, the stuff that my mama dealt with, my grandmama, my granddaddy. And he said, watch this. I need, I need you to be that person. I need you to come out of this thing. And God is saying now, whatever has tried to creep back into your life, you're going to shut the door on that thing. And I evicted in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, I sense this thing. It's like the spirit of deliverance. Whatever it is, it will not come to hound you again in Jesus' name. Because this time, when you evict that sucker, you're going to get so full of the word. You're going to get so immersed in my glory and my spirit. It will drown out the desires of that thing. And I'll take the taste of that thing out of your mouth. And you're going to experience my glory like you've never seen before. May the glory of God fall strong on us. May the fear of the Lord hit us like never before. Watch this. See, 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 I know how stuff can creep back in and it'll mess up your recovery process. He says that I got it. He says, you got to deal with this. You got to deal with this first because they can go and start doing all these things. And it'll, it'll be like putting money with pockets with holes in it. And it's like I'm doing this stuff, but something ain't working. It's like washing your feet with your socks on. Something ain't right about it. It don't feel right. Something just ain't. And it's like God is saying, I got to get into the recesses of your soul and begin to bring out and begin to purify and begin to set free. I'm going to set you free in there. See, whom the son has set free is free indeed. 
but you have to enforce that freedom with the authority of your tongue, with the authority of your mind and say, wait a minute, I'm going to cast down those images. This is a new season in my life. This is a new day. And what Satan would do, Satan would try to lure you with the, with the pleasure of the thing he's trying, God's trying to bring you out of. And listen, it ain't worth the pleasure of it is not worth you forfeiting your destiny. I, I curse destiny killers now. Anything that's trying to harass you, anything that's trying to hold you captive, it got to come off you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus, Listen, in Jesus' name, I'm telling you, we're going to eliminate pride. You got to humble yourself. You got to submit yourself. Listen, the Bible says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Let, let, me, let me read 1 Peter 5, 1 and 7. This is the whole, this thing about humility. It says in verse one, it says the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He says, I'm a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. He says, feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly not by filthy lucre, not for money, but of a ready mind. See, I'm not trying to hoard this Lord anything over you. It's my job to preach the gospel to you. It's my job to help you in areas if you're messing up as the overseer of your soul. That's my job. And I'm taking ownership of that now. I want to make sure that if I see something that needs to be addressed, I got to address it. Because I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to push you into your good life. I remember I heard this. I remember I had this on a, on a message of mine years ago when we first started. But we use it for our, um, our internet radio. And I, be, I remember saying, I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm here to push you into your destination. My job is not to buddy, but listen, I, I love people. And I ask God to rekindle my heart for people. Because if truth be told, my heart started getting hard towards people. And I, start, and I almost got to a point I stopped caring about them. It's like, okay, if they ain't going to care about me, I ain't going to care about them. But God says, you cannot pastor my people. You cannot lead my people. You cannot minister to my people without having a heart for my people. So I had to ask the Lord to heal me. Lord, heal me of the hurt. Heal me of the betrayal. Heal me of people who turned on me when I opened up this and opened up that and was there for them and know that. And listen, they entrusted me with their secrets and I know stuff about them. I said, Lord, help me. Because I don't want to be bitter. I don't want the next person who comes to now suffer from what the last person did. So I had to be honest with myself. I couldn't just keep saying and cover it up. No, I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. No, I was hurt. And I had to admit to myself I was hurt. And now say, God, help me to heal from the hurt, but keep my sensitivity to you and towards people and my compassion so that now I don't hold back from ministering to their lives what they need to bring them out of their situation. And I'm telling you, I have been going through a transformation chamber and I'm telling you, God is doing something in me. And I'm so glad. Listen, I don't care what level you get at. You always got to keep growing. You always need God. You always need Jesus. You're going to always need the Holy Ghost. You need all of them to help you get through things and to get to that place. Because God, I want authentic, supernatural transformation to take place in the lives of your people. But first father, I want it for me. So I had to change. I was so busy thinking about you. I never thought I wasn't even thinking about me to the, to the degree that I needed to. Because watch this, the best thing I can be to you is an example. The best thing. I was with my son just last night. We was doing something. And I, and I remember I was getting ready to talk to him about something. I was going to say, son, come here and sit down. I'm going to talk to you. But all of a sudden, I just stopped. I said, no, nah. because I thought about it. I said, I don't want to just talk. I want to show by example. And I know he was probably looking like, like, what's going on? What's, you know, 
It wasn't like he did anything wrong. Then I told him, I said, come on, let's get up. We got to get something done. We had to clean up something, get something straight. And while we was doing it, it was like, before we got started, he was like, man, he's like, this ain't fun. He's like, I don't really, I said, I know. I said, but son, sometimes you got to do what you need to do or don't want to do so that you can now enjoy it. I said, we work first and then play second. I said, you got to overcome how you feel to get certain things accomplished. And so watch this. He followed my leadership. As I did, he did. And what I was doing was training him. Watch this. In what I was going to tell him. And so now it's better. See, this is the thing. You've heard things. Some of you have talked a good game. But it's like, uh uh-uh, we're going to do this thing. Remember, in the book of Acts 1, it says that, I think it might be verse 5, when it talks about Jesus began to do and to teach. In other words, he demonstrated, then he taught on what he did. And it took heart and it, t- it takes better than the people when they see the example. They see these things. Listen, man. I'm, okay, let's, let's, let's go. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. What verse? I was, I'm in 1 Peter 5, uh, verse 3. It says this, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock or examples. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, you younger submit unto the elder, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you are subject one to another and be, watch this, be clothed with humility. Be clothed in humility. Watch this, why? For God resisteth the proud, but watch this, he gives grace to the humble. You're not going to receive that grace in that situation if you don't humble yourself. You're going to have to humble yourself. So sometimes humbling yourself means receiving the insight, even from some outside voices that know you and see things and they'll start sharing. And so instead of you going into this instant defensive mode, I, oh, we all, we all can do it. The minute somebody starts telling you about you, the flesh naturally goes into defense mode. Versus being open to receive. Let me see. Let me, and have, I got different people telling me the same thing. I need to take inventory. I really need to say, no, I'm good in that area. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. See, things like somebody tells you that you're not consistent in your life. You said a lot of stuff, but you never followed through with what you said. So that means I need to work on that. It doesn't mean that, and sometimes your intentions can be good when you set it, but if you never set the thing to get it done, I have this quote in front of my, um, on, in front of my desk. It says, whatever gets scheduled gets done. Whatever gets scheduled gets done. And sometimes what happens is when you get, see, this is part of recovery of even your name, the trust of people in your life whether it's a father with their children or mother with their children or whatever, spouses, whatever the case is. Okay, if we are serious about doing this thing and causing recovery, we're going to have to be intentional about the development of this relationship. So that means that we got to schedule it. We're going to put it on the schedule. I want to be spontaneous. Listen, I'm working on being consistent. I want to show you that I'm serious about change. And I have to humble myself. I have to humble myself to correction. I have to humble myself under the mighty hand of God. And watch this. He says he gives grace to the humble. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Come on, come on. That he may exalt you, but this time, because remember, we already read it in James, where he says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. But I like this. He adds something different in first Peter. He'll, he'll exalt you. He'll exalt you. But in due time, whereas your passion won't try to push past the time frame of God. I know you want it, but did you go through the process yet to get it? Have you done everything he's told you to do? Have you gone back and now begin to get certain things in check? Because he says, I'm not going to elevate you if you are not ready to go to that level yet. 
I love you too much and I love the people around you too much because if you haven't gotten certain things done in your life or right in your life, your lack of structure and discipline at this level will kill you at the next one. Who love? I know it's strong. I know. I know. But you need it. Why didn't it go right the first time? Never waste a crisis. Learn from it. Sometimes some of you dealing with pride, you trying to act like you don't know and it's pride, but you know it's pride. It's your ego. You don't even want to go ask for help when you know you need it. You got to admit, it's hard for me to do this on my own. I need help with this. And God is saying, I want to eliminate that so you can recover all. I want you to have everything that's been promised to you. But now it's inventory time. Take inventory so that healing can take place. In the name of Jesus, I declare the healing of God. The awareness of what you need to be healed from. The awareness and the insight of areas in your life that need to be addressed so that you can move forward. I pray for the structure and the strategy to get it done. And the consistency that now needs to take place and the discipline that needs to take place to overcome that area. See, for some of you, it's an area like this. In order to overcome that area, you may, to get, you may need to get back to certain disciplines of prayer, of confession, of worship, of giving. Whatever area of keeping your word, doing what you, you're going to have to say, okay, I need to start. And we know everything starts with a seed. And the seed of the word is what brings the faith. And everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. And so we'll, we'll deal more and dig more into the principles, but you're going to have to start dealing with one of the things that starts speaking your freedom from the beginning. You're going to need to start declaring and decreeing. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, um, let me read first. Uh, let me read Romans 4, Romans 4, 17 through 21. I might end with, hit, with this, with this scripture. We can pick up next time. It says Romans 4, 17 through 21. And it says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. I, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, now watch this. He quickens the dead, makes alive, and he calls those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. This is talking about Abraham now. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, and he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's room, and he staggered not, not at the principles of God. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me stop here. I know they're talking about the birth, but what is the area you need to stagger not at? Or that you don't need to consider, the faith that considers not? Yeah, when you start speaking, sometimes while you are reprogramming your thinking now, there are going to be thoughts, feelings, emotions that will try to come up to get you off of you confessing the word. What is this going to do? Me speaking the word consistently. But remember, how that going to happen? You know, you done done too much to go back now. You've hurt too many people. See, oh man, I hear this. The easiest thing sometimes for you to do instead of going through the work of recovery is for you to just write it off and to say, I don't want to do the work to recover. I just want to start fresh from here. Yes, you start fresh from here, but there are some things you need to go back and address. I'm going to tell you straight up. There are some people you need to go back to apologize to that you don't want to. There's something just said, well, you know, they ain't in my life. And we use stuff like this. This is the other thing that I heard. We use stuff because we hear preachers preaching, and I get it. If they were designed to stay in my life, they would have stayed in my life. And so because now they're out of my life, they ain't necessary for my success. I get that. But some of them were called to be in your life to be a part of your process. 
What happens with those people? What happens with the ones that God is saying that they've been damaged by what you did? And God is saying, I want you to help in their healing process, which will help you heal in your own. Some people, especially with men, boy, we could be some ego driven jokers, boy. You bet some, some, some dudes you need to go back to, man, it was my fault. You know what? I should have done better at this. I should have communicated with you better. I, I was hurt by when you did this and I felt betrayed. So as a result of that, and see, watch this. When you take it ownership and you admit, I don't want you to say add stuff to it. You know, you, y'all know how we do stuff. We add stuff. You know, if I did anything wrong, you know what you did wrong. So stop putting the if on it, number one. And just admit I did this wrong. But watch this. You got to know that it was wrong. Some of you got to, first of all, that's what I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened for you to even know what you did wrong so that you can properly go back and get it right. Doing stuff like, don't, listen, I done done that. I've been there where the Holy Ghost tell me to apologize to my wife or something, and I'm fighting with it. I don't want to go say nothing. I'm like, why don't you tell her, you know, why I got to be the one, and why, well, you said X, Y, and Z, and you shouldn't have said that. Well, she said this, but it doesn't matter. Aren't you the head? Aren't you the leader now? That means you got to deny yourself. Watch this. Watch this. Do you? <laughs> Some of you so busy trying to prove your point that you missing the joy that you can have all because you're trying to prove yourself right. That goes into your reputation. The Bible says we got to be like Jesus, who was of no reputation, but humbled himself in the form of a servant. See, when we start changing, it says, I'm willing to deny myself for the sake of this thing to flourish and grow. And now all of a sudden now, what is it that God, see, see all of a sudden now, when you get out of pride, you hurt less. Dog, oh, that's good, Holy Ghost. Whenever, watch this, let me, let, me, let me break it down real quick. See, when you're walking in pride, it's easy to get hurt because you, because pride thinks about self. When I come out of self and think about you, I can hear you arguing. And it, when I'm in pride, it sounds like you're nagging. But when I'm in the form of a servant, I'm listening for your hurt. <clears throat> and I can hear, why are you talking like that? Oh, they hurt. They're tired. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Something is happening within them. Now meet that. No, but they came to me like this. It has nothing to do with you. So you're making it all about you. People who are self-centered deal with pride. It's always about you. It's all about me. How I feel. How they hurt me. Lord, and that's what your prayer time is. Lord, you saw what they did to me. And Lord, and he said, watch this. Didn't I tell you to bless those that curse you? Didn't I tell you to speak... Oh, don't speak in that. Listen, let's keep, I want to read because, um, oh man, it was in Rome. It might've been in Romans or it might've been in um, first Peter. As you go further in the scriptures, it talks about you judging people. I think it was in James. It might've been, no, it might've been first Peter. As you read further on, it's like, don't judge somebody else. Who are you to judge? You're not the judge of all. Who are you to say? Because you don't know what's going on in that person's life. How are you going to judge another man's servant? I remember this preacher years ago, man of God, great man of God. He said the Lord spoke to him one time and he was talking about this other preacher. And he like, it was almost like, I can't believe what they did or how they did this. And he, and the Lord rebuked them harshly and told him, who are you to judge another man's servant? He said, if you would have been under half the pressure he was under, you would have crumbled. And after that, he said, Lord, forgive me. And he kept his mouth off of that person. You got to be mindful to keep your mouth off of people because God's grace is there for you just as well as it is for them. And this is why he gives grace to the humble. Lord, I recognize that what I did was wrong. I recognize that I need to make adjustments in my life. I submit myself to you. I submit myself to one another. And then I like that. And he says this, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you, casting that care on him. God, I'm not going, this time, I'm not going, I'm, I'm not going to 
belittle people. I'm going, Lord, I'm going to have the right attitude. I speak the truth in love. So even when you are talking to people, listen, you got to understand in first, was it in, in um, uh, Galatians five and one, it says when you, it might be six and one, it says, will you who are spiritual, when you find a brother or a sister that's taken in a fault, you, which are spiritual, restore them in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, at least you also fall into that same thing. Listen, you guys say, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I'd be right there. So I, how dare I judge you according to what you just did where I could be in the same situation? See, give grace. Grace people are gracious people. So we still got to help even in the recovery process. This is why some people don't want to admit that they need help because they feel like they'll be belittled if they submit and make themselves vulnerable enough to now say, okay, I need help. So now they got to know that, hey, man, listen, come on. No problem. No problem. It's easier to deal with that person than the one who keeps saying, I ain't got a problem. I'm good. And then they build up this wall. And you're trying to figure out why certain things just, they don't build up the wall. I've seen that. I've seen it. And my heart hurts. And it, 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 it's like, Lord, don't they see? And many times they don't. So my prayer is that your eyes be open to see, your heart be open to receive. It's time to make the adjustments. I may, de- I may need to redo the spirit, of the, the fear of the Lord message. Because sometimes we think about when we've dealt with the grace of God and the goodness of God. And I did a message years ago. It was, I think it was at a Bible study um, of five hindrances to the grace. And one of those things is looseness. Sometimes we can get loose in things. Sometimes it can be like, okay, we started out disciplined, but then we got off. One of the things is talkativeness or loquaciousness, being a talkative person. Sometimes, man, you frustrate yourself because you just talk so much. You got to shut down the negative talk in the language. God wants to do something in your life. He wants to transform and to change. And I'm telling you now, it's time to immerse yourself in God's word. It's time. We, 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 got, we got to do something. I, I've been thinking about some things to do that it will help you. But you got to take ownership in your development process and your deliverance process and being set free from things so that, man, you'll never go back to the thing that you came out of. The Spirit of God told me I was um, ministering to a couple doing a, uh, a, count, a marital counseling session years ago. And while I'm in the middle of the session, the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, can a caterpillar ever go back? No, can a butterfly ever go back to being a caterpillar? Because I was teaching on the renewing of the mind and sharing on the renewing of the mind. And I was like, no, I just thought about it. And it was like, why? He was like, why? Because a metamorphosis is taking place. That's the word, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It comes from the Greek word metamorpho, where we get our word metamorphosis. He says the reason why some people go back is because they are, the transformation hasn't taken place. They're still going through the process of transformation. But when the transformation process is complete, I don't know when that is, per se. But there'll be desires that are changed. It is impossible for a, cat- a, a butterfly to go back into that caterpillar stage. They've totally been changed and transformed. And when you go through this transformation chamber of the word and the spirit, the things that you struggle with and that you may be currently struggling with, you're going to come out of it and you're going to stay out of it. And you're going to walk in a level of maturity and discipline. I'm speaking faith to you now. I'm speaking faith to you now that you'll never go back to being the same person ever again. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be. There'll be people who will see your attitude and change. It's like, man, you have changed. That's when, especially those closest to you, they're going to see, yes, dad's changed, mom's changed. They're not the same way. And you got to take ownership. Be mindful, leaders. People watch you. As leaders, you can't do everything everybody else does. 
It is a higher level of accountability and calling. And so we have to be mindful that we want to give. I'm not talking about you got to live a life that, you know, you're afraid of making a mistake. No, God's grace is there for that. Yeah, and I know some people will cancel you out quick. But know that God is not canceling you out. But I want you to understand this. It's time for the transformation to take place. And so now, let your recovery take place now in the name of Jesus. Even as I began preaching, there was something that was hitting certain people. I don't know who you are, where you are right now. But that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And I want you guys out there to begin to do this. Begin to ask God to even open up your eyes. See, this is why I pray that the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. I want my eyes open to see what's wrong with me for me to correct it. I want to be the best version of an individual that God has called me to be. We're supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ. So I need to begin to say, okay, God, I got to work on this. I got to work on me. I got to work on me. And this is where that grace is given. Grace is there to fill a gap. So even when you mess up while you're trying to get it right, you don't beat yourself up with condemnation. You just say, hey, I'm going to keep on moving forward. And the next time around, I'm going to get it right. And then if another opportunity comes up, if I mess up there, oh, Lord, man. Okay. Let me, let me whatever you got to do, whether you got to apologize to a person, do something, Whatever it is, I want to make it right. I want to be right. I want to do what's right because it's right. And I want to do it right. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you praise and honor. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you minister yeah, to the lives of your people. The conviction of God. Your conviction that's there to transform us, to lead us into transformation, to lead us into change to lead us into growth and development. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see that, Lord. Yeah. Transformation. I pray for your endurance to handle the supernatural turnaround and the miraculous breakthrough, that you be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inward man to handle the process of patience you have to go through until you get to your destination. I pray that you will not quit, that the spirit of might be upon you. Glory to God. To strengthen you mentally, to strengthen you physically, to strengthen you spiritually, to endure and overcome the process you're going through now. I speak life right now to families. I speak restoration to your name and to your credit. Not only glory to God, I speak this, I speak this. Yeah, restoration where your credit is concerned, but God blesses you with more than enough cash. You don't even need the credit. You just pay for it cash. And Lord, I'm telling you, restoration of everything, whatever that vision is that you need to dust off, bring it back to God, bring it back before you and place it at his feet and begin to pray right now over that vision and to ask God to show you what it is that you need to do to get that thing accomplished and to get it done. And as you begin to hear from God, he'll begin to lead God and direct you to the natural steps that you need to take, to the daily steps that you need to take, and that you're consistently obeying what you hear. And as you hear and as you obey, you will see the fruit of it on the other side. And they'll bring great rejoicing, but it'll also bring great strength. And don't and think it not strange. Think it not strange. Don't think it to be a crazy thing when there will be attacks that come to try to get you off of the process because Satan is afraid that if you go through that, that you'll see the goodness of God, that you'll begin to grow stronger in him. So even for some of you in the beginning stages, there'll be things and hiccups that try to come to try to deter you from moving forward. God is saying, don't let, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let go of the process. And now I got to share this. You'll know when it's of God, when you come to a closed door that he doesn't want you to go through. 
and you will be sensitive. That's him protecting you from making a mistake and protecting you from you when he shuts it down. It doesn't mean you try to force that door open and make that way good. Say, God, where is it that you're guiding me now? Shall I? This is what David said. He didn't go in his emotions. He didn't go in his feelings. He knew he needed to get quiet before God and settle himself down and ask God, shall I pursue? Some people would have just said, man, you ain't got to ask God that. Just pursue it. Uh Uh-uh. David knew. Let me get God's direction on this and not allow outside voices to determine to me if I should do it. You got to know on the inside, shall I pursue, Lord? He said, yeah. If he says yes, pursue, know that you'll recover. See, David's recovery was based on the word from God. He knew he had God's backing in his endeavors. So before you move forward, ask God, shall I pursue this? Shall I pursue? Glory to God. Now, there may be somebody out there. I don't know where where you are right now. There may be somebody out there. You you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today. You need to. You need to. Come on in. Come on in. He loves you. He's drawing you. He's wooing you. He says, "I I want you to experience everything that I have for you, the life abundant living. I want you to do this. I want you to repeat this prayer. If that's you, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want you to repeat this prayer simply after me. Simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan. I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah, if that's you, you did that. Welcome to the body of Christ. We applaud you. We salute you. But we want to help you grow in your faith. If that's you and this is the first time you made that confession of your faith and you want to grow and learn how to grow and develop, you got to Now, it's not just about you making it to heaven, but God wants to show you how to live while you're on this earth. And so, listen, if that's you, we want you to contact us. Let us know, hey, I got saved, and we want to be a blessing to you. We want to help you with material and content to help you grow and increase in Him. I want you to, listen, I'm telling you, I want you to contact us so that we can now help you grow in in your walk with God. And there's some information, I believe, it may be coming up on the screen. You can... Um, um, email us at connect at spiritoffire.us, connect at spiritoffire.us, and somebody from our connect team will assist you and to help you. Um, You can send us messages on our um, different uh, platforms. And so we want to help you. Send us a DM or something. Just listen. We'll we'll get in contact with you. We want to bless you. We want to help you. If that's you. Amen. Now, Lastly, there may be somebody that you don't have a church home and God is leading you to join and connect with us. We're endeavoring to do this thing for God and to go teach his people who they are. Our motto as a ministry is changing the culture, igniting a passion, living a dream. You change a culture by changing the mindset of the people in that culture. See, we're talking about igniting a passion for the kingdom of God. And that means God's way of doing things, how he does things. And so we want you to become excited about that. We want, you to, we want to teach you the principles of the kingdom of God so that you can get the results of the kingdom. That way it turns into now living a dream. That it doesn't mean it's a life exempt of issues and problems and things that arise, but it's the strength and the ability to overcome anything that arises. And so learning how to walk this life of faith, we want to help you in it. 
We want to help you. If that's you and God is leading you to connect with this ministry in that fa fashion, go ahead and send us a message to those same uh, platforms or to the connect at that same email, connect at spiritify.us. And we'll have somebody um, to reach out to you for that. Whether you're local or whether you're global, it does not matter. We're developing our e-church stronger for those that are not here personally. Um, we're now back in in-person services right now twice a month. Uh, we had a service in person last week. We'll have another one this upcoming Sunday. Um, it is the 18th, September the 18th, the 1230 service. So when we're in person, it's at 1230. And our corporate prayer starts at about 1215. And so, you know, if you're local or near the Richmond area, you're more than welcome to come out. We'll send the message out. It'll be at the Arts Community Center. And we'll have the information. Um, we'll be dispersing it on our platforms. Our, um, internet platforms, so social media platforms. So um, if that's you, if you have not followed us, follow us at uh, Spirit of Fire Fellowship on our IG accounts, Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts, go to our YouTube channel so that way you can still be in the loop as the new content things being released and you can keep in, a, uh, in you be in the know about what's going on. Now there may be somebody that, hey, you're already a member of a church. We're not trying to pull you from your church or anything like that. If that's where God has called you to be, you be faithful to your pastors at that church. Okay, but if and as you're led, what you may want to do is become a partner with this ministry to help us accomplish what God called us to do. And so we'll let you know the benefits of partnership, things that it takes to be a partner. Just very, very simple process. If that's what you want to do and say, hey, you know, what are the requirements of that? You know, are you are interested in being a partner of this ministry to help us get this job done. Listen, you can reach out to us as well. We would love to have you be a part of our team to grow this vision and, the, and to manifest what God has called us to do. All right. Well, guys, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. There's some um, <clears throat> the information that's getting to come up on your screen as to ways that you can give. Listen, whatever God is telling you to do, do it. Honor him. Whatever, you know, as God has blessed you and you take that portion of what God has blessed you with and you honor him with it. Remember, in the book of Genesis, when um, Abram came to Melchizedek, who was the high priest, at that point, at that time, tithing was not in implemented by the law. This guy came freely as an appreciation for God giving him victory in the battle. He took 10% 10 10 of the spoil and honored Melchizedek, and then Melchizedek had released a blessing on him. And so now it was because of what God had done that he honored God with his giving. And so now we just thank God for the opportunity to sow in the gear. And even in 1 in Corinthians 9, it talks about as you come to God and as you give, do it with the right attitude. Don't do it grudgingly or of necessity because God loves a cheerful giver. And so because he wants you to have the right attitude in your giving, he doesn't want you to feel under compulsion. He doesn't want to feel like we're beating you up to, you know, you know if you don't do this, then this is going to happen to you. No, we're not going to do that. We're going, we want you to do it with the right heart and the right attitude. That's what this thing is about, is doing it with the right attitude and with the right heart and with the right motive. And there's something about when you give that seed and you sow in that type of environment and atmosphere. And that, watch this, you can believe God for him to give back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That he'll start causing men to give into your bosom. So we want to honor God in our giving. It's a part of worship. We don't want to come before him empty-handed. Listen, I sold, I think it was even yesterday. I just went on ahead of time. I was ready to release it. You know, I like to go ahead and get it on out. And just like, okay, I'm going to sow. That's the first thing I want to do is honor God and my giving. And so I want to honor him. And so the, one of the things I've been conditioned to do that over the years. And so it becomes a lifestyle of discipline. See, that's some of, you know, we'll talk about that, the disciplines, the things that we want to do, um, even as a believer, to even show our honor and appreciation to God and appreciation to people. And so as you give, we're in agreement with you for your corresponding return. We're believing for the hundredfold, the optimum yield. And so even in the Old Testament, it talks about being a thousand times great. It might have been, I don't know if it was in uh, Deuteronomy. Um, we want you to even just grow to the point of full capacity. And that also God begins to expand your capacity to receive. So as God begins to lead God and direct you to do things, He's, in, he's doing it because he's trying to get you to another place. He's trying to grow you. He's trying to expand you. And we're believing for expansion. Now, while we're giving here, 
one of the things that I want to make sure that I keep it before you, um, you can sow at this time and give. Um, uh, some month, maybe a couple of months ago, a month or two ago, I talked to you all about um, the truck that we're believing God for. Do we have the picture? Can we pull it up? Now, this truck, it was like I was sitting and I was praying about something. And God, I believe the Spirit of God gave me a couple of things. And this was one of the things was to believe for a truck. I'm like, God, we're believing first for a place. Why do you want me? <laughs> and I knew some of the reason why, because of the things that we're going to be doing. Some of it is for the need that we're going to be having. But right now, I don't want to ask. I'm not going to ask for money right now pertaining to it. What I'm doing right now is this. I'm just taking it step by step this time. I want to do something a little different. We're going to believe God together. We're going to release our faith together for this. And the way that we used to do it was, as we see it, you see it before you. I want you to stretch your hand towards that picture, whether it's on your phone, whether it's on your TV. And I want you to make this confession of your faith with me. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new truck paid for in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now, let's just thank God for it. Father, we thank you for it. We believe we receive it now in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We give you glory, praise, and honor. Thank you, Father, that you have us in the right places at the right times, meeting the right people, making the right connections in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're also going to do this for our new facilities. We're going to make this confession of our faith. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new property paid for, our new properties paid for, that we have the right facilities that fits our needs, wants, and desires, and that it comes to us under grace in a perfect way. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Now, we'll start sharing some other things later on, but I just want us to get started with that. I want us to, every week, we're going to consistently do this. I want us to speak over that thing, speak life, okay? And we call it into being. Some people say, oh, man, you ain't got to do it. I mean, that's something simple. You can do it blind. God is a reason why he told me to do it. I know there's a reason. And I'm going by the direction of the Spirit of God. I believe that's what he spoke to me to start believing for. Because there are a lot of things we need to accomplish to get done. And we will need our own transportation for it to get done. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. I declare and decree as I give the final benediction. I declare great favor over your life. I declare that God is raising up people to use their power, resources, and influence to assist you and to help you. I declare that policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions are being changed and reversed on your behalf. I declare that you win battles you don't even have to fight because God is fighting them for you. We declare it and decree it now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. Enjoy this football Sunday, y'all, while y'all there. See you next time. Peace.